الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره نستعين به جل وعلا ونستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته ومعصيته أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا ونبينا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صلي وسلم على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عن أصحابه أجمعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كلا إن الإنسان لا يطغى أرآه استغنى. في آية الآية الكريمة أو the two آيات are في سورة العلق. All of you know. اقرأ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The first آية that was revealed to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله. اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق. اقرأ. وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم until here the ayah basically or the surah talks to الحبيب الأعظم صلى الله عليه وآله اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق read in the name of your lord learn اقرأ باسم رب رب وربك الأكرم your lord that's the most honorable الذي علم بالقلم he taught you, gave you knowledge, gave everyone knowledge. علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم has taught the human being what they don't know. Until then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to say, في القرآن الكريم here, says, كلا, no. إن الإنسان لا يطغى. But the human will be a tyrant. What does this have to do with the first one? First we're saying read uh, and then reading and Allah is the one who taught you Rabbuk al-Akram, your honorable Lord and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops this whole ayah like this by saying kalla, stop, no, no, no uh, the meaning of the ayah no, kalla inna al-insana la yatgha no, but indeed the human being will be a tyrant an ra'ahu, an ra'ahu staghna when Ra'ahu means sees. When that human being sees that they are powerful. Or staghna means well off. Or independent. It seems like it's not connecting together, but it is. And oftentimes, the Quran al Kareem moves abruptly, sharply, from one scene to another scene. And sometimes people don't see the connection and they think they're totally unconnected world or not connected to where they are in fact entirely connected. As if the Quran is saying, this is your Lord that you're supposed to be praising. The one who taught you all these things. The one who gave you all these things. The one who keeps endowing all his endowments every single day over you. He gives you health. He gives you wealth, he gives you wisdom, he gives you family, he gives you children, he gives you housing, he gives you shelter. Even if he gave you one endowment, the breathing that you have, and allowed you to walk and permitted you to walk on this earth with the opportunity to be among the pious and most powerful slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but yet no, kalla inna al-insana la yatgha. But indeed, the minute that human being feels that they are worth something, or they have something, they will become tyrants. As if what happened to all these good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. 
How come all these things are immediately forgotten? And then, kalla. Kalla is abrupt, change the whole sentence. Don't worry about enumerating all these endowments, for the human being will become tyrant the minute they think they are independent. Stagna, stagna <coughs> comes from ghani or ghina. Ghina means wealth. But the wealth does not necessarily mean money. It could mean money as well. But also it means that they are worth something. Money and power. They can do it and therefore they become tyrants. They think they can do it. Therefore, yani of course thinking, the Quran uses here the word ra'ahu. And I want you to concentrate. Sometimes when we talk, read the Quran, always I always mention, remind myself and you, to interact with Al-Quran Al-Kareem. Not simply reciting, but interacting with the recitation. And Ar-Ra'ahu. Ra'ahu means if the human being perceives. Ru'ya means perception here. Perception means what? You perceive that you are well off. You perceive that you are rich. You perceive that you are powerful. You perceive. And what the Quran wants to say that that perception is really misleading. It's a wrong perception. It's a misconception rather than a perception. Therefore, Al Quran pictures and gives us the scene of Fir'aun. When Fir'aun is saying, he gathered all the people, Alaysa li mulkumis? Isn't? Am I not the king of Egypt? Quran is saying, am I not the king of Egypt? Look at all the rivers. They're all running from under me. I, I'm the supreme lord. Notice, vision here, the perception is wrong. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he declares the people, not only the believers, Ya ayyuhal nas, not Ya ayyuhal mu'minun, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul, Fuqara. You are the fakir. The plural of fakir, fuqara. You are the needy versus rich. Versus stagna. <coughs> stagna means wealthy. La Allah wants subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us, Ya Yunas, and to you, O people, you are the unwealthy. You are the needy, al fuqara. Ya Yunas, fuqara. You are the definition, al. You are the needy to Allah. O oh people. Wallah wal ghaniyul hamid. And Allah is the one who is attributed with ghina or ghani. And of course, ghani here doesn't mean wealth. Because ma indakum yanfad. What you have, no matter how much wealth you have, will perish. Wa ma indallahi baq. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has is not subject to decrease or increase in that. Therefore, some of the uh, ulama, when they translate the word faqir to Allah or al-fuqara here, what does it mean? They say it is the people of Allah, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that do not feel, they don't have the sense of mulkiyah. Yani they don't feel that they own. When is it that you are faqir? It's when you don't own anything, right? When you don't own anything at all, then... You are considered faqir, supposedly. And we're not going to go into the difference between the faqir and the miskin. Which one is poorer, the faqir or the miskin? And some people say, no, the faqir is more poorer than the miskin. <coughs> some people say that the miskin, miskinan the matraba. Matraba means that miskin. Quran talks about the miskin, and the miskin is, the stomach is on the sand. Because there's nothing, it's like empty, totally, there's nothing in the stomach. It's like if they're right on the sand, they're sleeping on the sand, they're eating even from the sand. There's nothing to eat. Aw miskinan dha matraba. So that's the first people, some people say that the miskin is poorer than the faqir. Some people say no, al-faqir is poorer than the miskin. Why? Because Allah talks about the people in Surah Al-Kahf. فَأَمَّا السَّفِينَ فَكَانَتْ أَمَّا السَّفِينَ فَكَانَتْ لِي مَسَاكِينَ the Masakin and they own a ship. Oh, no. And is a miskin owns a ship? That's big. Huh? Lakin notice that also there is a point here 
that when you give zakah and sadaqah, don't just try to go and get everybody's biography and income until the dot. And you put yourself an accountant on their spending. Even if the faqir or even if the person is a miskeen, you're Allah, yani, which means what? They have things and they own a ship. But they maybe there are needs. Then you can also give them what? The money of zakah and the money of sadaqah. In the masadaqatu, you all know, or the, the ayah of Surah Tawbah, the fuqara wal masakin wal aminin alayah, faqir wa miskin is eligible still for Tawbah. Yani some people, Al Quran Kareem sometimes wants us to open our eyes. Because some people want to get everyone's and say, well, since you get this, then this is what you need. Everybody has their own needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put people and they, and He put them in certain places and certain situations and their needs vary and they don't do their life based on what you think. Anyway. When is that human being then becomes a tyrant? When they feel the sense of ownership. I own. Hmm? I own this. Therefore the ulama of Suluk they say, well, the faqir is the one that doesn't feel the sense of ownership of anything. Why? Well, it truly is. We say, al-mulku lillah. Huh? Who owns everything? Allah. Everybody says that. You ask him, who owns everything? Oh, yeah, I don't own anything. It's all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they, they, when they talk, huh? they're talking with what, what, what is their net worth? Three million? It's a three million talk. Now someone comes in heavier weight. Five million. Five million talk. It's like people who carry things, carry lots of uh, uh, watermelons on their hands. The more watermelons, the more, <clears throat> you know, I'm, talk I'm here, mm -hmm. talking, power. <laughs> but when you ask a faqir who doesn't have anything, Ya Akhi, well, how much do you own or what? Uh, Alhamdulillah, whatever I have is okay. Huh? And what I don't have is also okay. Why? The talk is not based on the how many watermelons are they carrying, if, if that represents millions or hundreds of thousands. Therefore, when we say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا You think that the quwa and the power and the hawl is because of the money you have and the power you have. But indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي Al-Azim, the one who is attributed with superiority and greatness, no matter how superior you may perceive yourself to be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is attributed with superiority, not you. So there is a point here, Al-Quran Al-Kareem says, perception, arra'ahu stagna, when they think they are powerful. Notice, <coughs> teenagers, those of you who have teenager, teenage uh, children, you teach them all the time. They have a sense when that they come through, uh, you know, decision making and all these things, at autonomy versus, versus uh, other things as psychologists want to go and say. They start saying, well, I know more than my father does. Mm, your father has given you the summary of, of their whole life. So they make decisions. And usually those decisions, decisions are based on what? Because they think now they are independently, they don't need advice of anybody. Even if you give them the advice, they are, I don't need any advice. They, and if you force them, they will just listen. That goes from here, comes out of there. Why? Because of the sense of the perception that they know everything they need to know. And not only that, in fact, they know it better than you do. Doesn't matter what. Why is not? Why doesn't make any difference? Notice usually that perception is deficient. For we are, as human beings, we are limited by what we know, and what we know is limited. And the more you grow, and the more you spend time in this life, you learn. And therefore, there are many people who are not vocationally trained in a university system, but they are highly educated. And vice versa. Vice versa, there are many people who are vocationally trained in a university system, but they are extremely uneducated. And Islam wants us to understand a few things, and it's important. We deal with human beings. Kalla, no matter what people say. Kalla, huh? not indeed. Inna al-insana la yatra. 
tyranny. It becomes, it seeps in the human being when they feel that they are good. They feel that they are powerful. They feel that they, are, they perceive they, we own something. Therefore, Ibn Ata Allah secondary, Rahimahullah, Imam Ibn Allah says, Al-Ru'ya, or Ru'ya tul Ghina, if you see that you are actually well off or you are independent, this brings you tyranny. Why? He says, because the minute you feel that you have money and power, it gives you pride. And pride leads you to subjugating other peoples. I am better. Why? Because I, I have more money. I have more right. You see, some people even when they, let's say, donate to a good cause, because they donate more, they think they have more claim to that institution, or that cause, or etc. You, know, you notice how people, subhanAllah, act. Al-Quran Al-Kareem wants us to understand that this point that you think you're powerful, it is only temporary. Jabal ibn al-Ayham, <coughs> man from Al-Ghasasina, Al-Ghasasina basically are Arabs, Arab tribes, who are Christians. You know, often people think that all Arabs are Muslims. You know, Arabs could be Muslims, Jews, Christians. Those Al-Ghasasina, they are Arab Christians. Qabail, tribes, until today you'll see some of their remnants. One of their kings, they had, they had kings, one of their kings became Muslim. His name is Jabal ibn al-Ayham. Ibn al-Ayham was one of their kings. He became Muslim in the time of Umar radiallahu anhu. So one time, he brought his people, he's a king, and went to Umrah. In the Umrah, he's wearing his uh, royal clothing. Things that, uh, things that drag on the floor and and things that other people carry maybe, and things that are expensive. One of the people in the, around Fil Fi Mecca one day, he arrived in Mecca, one of the people stepped, I know that's a, too long of a, of a thing that he's wearing. One of the poor people from Mecca, he stepped on part of the clothing of Ibn Al-Ayham, the king. He looked at him, and he slapped him, breaking his nose. From Fazari, who was the man that, was, that has his nose broken. Breaking my nose for what? You stepped on my, uh, you stepped on my royal, uh, huh? royal uh, garment. He went to Umar al-Khattab. Umar radiallahu anhu looked at him. He says, uh, "Bring me that king." Bring the king. King and that king. Did you step? Did you slap him? He says, "Yeah." Did you break his nose? He says, "I did." He says, "Why did you do that?" He said, "Because I am a king and he is a layman, and he stepped on my garment." He says, "Look." Either we establish the punishment on you, or this man forgives you. He says, you want me to ask this man for forgiveness? He says, yes. He says, I'll change my deen. I'll go back to being Nasrani. He says, Umar al says, and then we'll kill you. <laughs> when he saw this thing, Umar was not kidding. Sayyidina Umar al was not kidding. He says, Ya Amir al give me till tomorrow. Give me an opportunity, let me think it over. He says, till tomorrow you got it. At night, Jabal ibn al-Ayham, he got his people, all the, you know, the people that came with him, he says, it's time to run. And they escaped. And they went back, and they followed, they changed and went to Nasraniya and all these things. After a long time, after a while, that king started thinking about this, what happened, and I did, and I went... He says, and he wrote a long poetry, we don't have time now to go over it. But he says, a king changed his deen for a slap, for a pride. What the point here that we want to take from this whole point is, that this person's pride and sense of feeling of power and money, did not allow him to be humble or equal. Furthermore, it made him oppress and transgress on the rights of other people and slap them because he thought he was better. Why? Because he perceived his kingdom, he perceived his money to be the barrier. And therefore, it actually is the barrier between him and Allah. It buries him from reaching the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى أَرْرَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى the human being becomes a tyrant the minute they think they are worth something. <coughs> Therefore,
for? Al-Quran wants us to ask ourselves, what's in your mind? What is in your heart today? What do you want? Power? Money? Position? Uh, you want people to praise you all the time? You want everyone to love you? You want people to always give, to serve you? You want people to glorify you? You want people to say all these good things about you? What, is, what do you want? You want to become the best and this and the best that and the best that. And the Quran, some of you says, may, one of you may say, Shaykh, then what's wrong with this? Yani, what's wrong in being the best? What's wrong in doing the best? Is this haram? It's not haram. But where is your heart? Where is your heart at? Your heart is in the dunya or your heart is in the deen? Your heart is in pleasing Allah or pleasing the creation of Allah? Your heart is in seeking His pleasure or their pleasure? Your heart is where is the point? What is filling your heart? The love of what is in your heart today is the question. Therefore, <clears throat> there's a rule. A rule is that Allah gives the dunya to those He likes and those He doesn't like. And if Allah loves you or doesn't love you, He gives you the dunya. But Allah gives the deen to only those He loves. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yu'ta dunya لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ وَلِمَنْ لَا يُحِبُّ To whomever he loves and he doesn't love, he gives the dunya. لكن الدين Allah only gives it to those he loves. Does not give it to those he doesn't love. Let me give you the example so you don't say I'm bringing this out of my pocket. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilul Rahman, Batal Tawheed in the Quran al-Kareem, Sayyidina Ibrahim, the hero of Tawheed, right? You all know, always debating, he's always on the debate, going back and forth. Munadhir. Sayyidina Ibrahim, he makes two dua. One for the dunya, one for the deen. Not for himself, for his offspring. Number one, for the dunya. Huh? He says, you know, for Surah Al-Baqarah, it's Qala Ibrahim, Rabbij al hadha baladan aminan. Oh Allah, when Ibrahim alayhi salam went to Mecca and he put Hajar with Ismail, with all these things, Wadin, Ghayri, these are, huh? it's a valley. There's no nothing in there. There's no trees. There's nothing. Oh Allah, Sayyidina Ibrahim turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made dua. Ij'al hadha baladan amina. Oh Allah, make this place safe. I'm leaving my family. Make it a safe place. Dua, the, the dua of the anbiya is accepted. We all know. Huh? If the prophets make dua, it's accepted. Number one, make the place safe. Huh? What else? Warzuq ahlah. O oh Allah, give the people of this valley in Mecca, huh? this valley, give them wealth. Ruzq. Warzuq ahlahu. Min al-thamarat man amana minhum billahi wal yawm al-akhir. Give the people among it, who lives here, lots of wealth. Those among them who believe in Allah and al yawm al-akhir. Stop the dua of Ibrahim. Allah did not stop here. Qala wa man kafar. I will only, not only give them rizq to those who believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment in here. Not only that, I will give rizq wa man kafar and those who disbelieve. Wa man kafar, fawmati'uhu qalila. Thumma atarruhu ila adhabin al-Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even if they disbelieve, I will give them. Kullan numiddu haula wa haulai min ata'i rabbik. Wa ma kana ata'u rabbika mahdura. The ayah says, we give them all. Those who believe and those who do not believe. And the giving of your Lord is not restricted. He creates them. How can he restrict his means? So they can sustain. How does he restrict his provisions if he creates them? He gives them. In the dunya, he gives. Those who are haula and those wa haula. Huh? Hada fi dunya. Lakin fi deen, what does Ibrahim say? Ibrahim say, Qala Rabbi, wa min dhurriyati. Hmm? Allah tells Ibrahim, you are the Khalifa, my Khalifa, you are the Prophet. If Allah gives you the prophecy, what does that mean? The Akhirah. You are the Akhirah. Huh? Sayyidina Ibrahim doesn't stop there. He likes it. He says, this is, Alhamdulillah, huh? I'm going to be a Prophet. I'm a Prophet of Allah. Qala wa min dhurriyati. Oh Allah and my offspring as well. And he gives them also the prophecy and all this. Qala la yanalu ahdi al-zalimin. 
Those who seek the prophecy cannot be zalimin, cannot be oppressors. Therefore, in other words, the akhirah is only given to do to who? To al-muttaqeen. Inna ma yataqabbal Allah mina al-muttaqeen. But al-zalimin cannot get the akhirah. But in the dunya, we'll give those and those. Notice. Ha'ula'i wa ha'ula'i. Therefore, Allah gives the dunya. Many people always say, if Allah doesn't... If, Allah, if I'm not doing something right, then Allah would not have given me this. Really? Uh, Qarun had more money. Well, Fir'aun had more power. Judging things like that, that's not how it is. Al-Quran wants us to open our heart and understand that a dunya may be given to anyone who does the effort. You do the effort. Man can I read the dunya wa zinataha? If you want the dunya and you want the zina, the zina of the dunya, Huh? Huh? Allah says, we will give them what they, what they, the reward of their deeds. You work hard for the dunya, you want to work hard to be a physician or an engineer or a salesperson or a businessman or a, a, a technical worker or a worker or whatever it is that you want to be. No matter who you are, you put that effort, a sincere effort. Allah says, We will reward them with, based on the efforts they gave. No problem with that. وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ And not only that, we will not give them less than they deserve of what they paid for, and they earned, and they hard worked for. We will not reward them less than that. We will reward them equally. There's no problem with that. لكن the point is what? وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَى نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Your vision or your objective ought not to be a dunya, but what to be? To be al-akhirah. Ibtaghi, like the Quran says, Ibtaghi fi ma ataka Allah al-dar al-akhirah. Look at the dar al-akhirah first. Make this your main menu. Make this your target and vision. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And don't forget your share in the dunya. The dunya is serving the akhirah. Not the akhirah is serving the dunya. Huh? And therefore, a lot of people... They say, or the wise people say, that the fool, the fool is the one who sells his akhirah for his dunya. Yani he sells his akhirah for things of the dunya. But worse than that, is the one who sells his akhirah for someone else's dunya. Hadal munafiq. He sells his akhirah for someone else's, not even for his own dunya, he sells it for someone else's dunya. And so one afiyah salam. Therefore, that sense of ownership and that sense of owning and well doing well has to be only with Allah's pleasure. And if it's other than that, then you see people struggling all the time. A man comes into the house of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. <coughs> Looks in the house, small, small house. Yani. The Bayt Amir al Mu'mineen fil Kufa was a small room next to the masjid. That, that was it. He sees him sitting on a small carpet, and the only carpet in the whole house. It's the only thing, little piece of thing, that's the Bisat. He says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, where is your athas? Where is your furniture? Yeah, see that? The only thing you have in this uh, is this piece of, piece of carpet, a rug. That's it. He says, Ya Ibn Ghafla, the man's name is Suwaid bin Ghafla. He says, Ya Ibn Ghafla, I am trying to build the furniture in the, uh, for the house in the Akhirah, not in the first, not in the house in the dunya. The house in the dunya is a temporary one. I am building, I'm putting furniture in that house for the akhirah. The nafsu tabki ala dunya wa qad alimat anna salamata fiha tarku ma fiha. The self, the man's, the human being's self, cries on the dunya, attached like this. Hatta when death comes, the eyes are shackled at the dunya. I don't want to go. Huh? Send me back. Rabbi rji'uni la'ali amal salihan. Even now, becomes creative saying, Oh Allah, send me back. Maybe I can do good this time. Just give me one more opportunity. Let me go back. Huh? Lakin, Sayyidina says, and that's what the the self cries on the dunya knowing well that the safety in the dunya is abandoning what's in the dunya. Detaching from the dunya. La da'ara lil mar ba'da al mawt yaskunuha illa allati kana qabla al mawt yabniha. The only house that you can really live in is the one after death, is the one that you are building before death. أقول قولي هذا الصفر. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا.
كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خاتم الأنبياء المعتبر صلى اللهم وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي وعلى آله أهل الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر وعلما بآثاره مكتفى واعتبر فإن بناها بخير طاب مسكنه وإن بناها بشر خاب بانيها If they build it right then they will have a nice home to go to but if they build it wrong then they actually have lost فعمل لدار غدا رضوان خازنها والجار أحمد والرحمن ناشيها then work for a home huh, where you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided it for you and your neighbor is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi A question then, what do we want? Orientation check. What do you want for dunya? Oh, I want this big car. Ya akhi, ask Allah Jannah. When we make our dua, let's put Jannah. Oh Allah, inna zalukal Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all Jannah. But Jannah is important because people, no, I want the car today. But wait, the car will come. Oh, are there cars in Jannah? Ya akhi, if you want the car in Jannah, you will get the car in Jannah. Lahum fiha, Allah says, Lahum fiha ma yashaun. Kana ala rabbika wa'dan masula. If you want the car, you will get the car. Fine. Yeah, you want the car? If the Quran says, Kana ala ala, Lahum fiha ma yashaun. They have in it the meaning of the ayah, what they want. You are so much attached to this car, ask Allah to give you a car in Jannah, it will give you a better car even. No fuel needed. <laughs> what is then, what is that you want? You ask me, what do you want? Everyone says, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want that. There is a point, the Quran wants us to say, we want the ridwan of Allah, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put you in your heart that you want the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah, seeking or acquiring the pleasure of Allah, is even better than Jannah. Better than... Tawbah, wa'ad Allah al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat. جَنَّةٍ تَجْرِبْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارُ خَيْدِنَا فِيهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةٍ They give a masakin tayyiba. Then what Allah says, وَرِضْوَانٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ He will give them jannat. The mu'mineen wal munad, they will have jannah. And they will have masakina tayyiba. في جنات عدن. But what else Allah says? وَرِضْوَانٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ Allah will give them all this, but the ridwan, the pleasure from Allah is what? Much bigger than all these jannah. It is much more emphasized and much more worthy. Therefore, Al-Bukhari Muslim, and I'll finish with this narrative in the Sahih. The hadith is authentic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling. Hadith Qudsi. Allah tells the people of Jannah. May Allah make us all among them. Uh, they'll be in Jannah sitting nicely. Huh? River is going down like this. Whatever they want comes to them. Secret word, Subhanak Allahumma. I always repeat that so we can remember it. If you want anything in Jannah, you have to say Subhanak Allahumma. Right away, angels come and bring you things. And then you say, Assalamu alaikum, ta'ayatuhum fiya salam. And then what is the last word you have to say? Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Three words, very simple, very nice. You don't have to complicate your life like today. Huh? Lakin sitting in Jannah, Allah tells them, Ya ahl al-Jannah, O people of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still there. And al-Jannah says, Labbayka wa sa'adayk, wal khayru fi yadayk. O Allah, labbayk wa sa'adayk. What do you want us to do? And everything is in your hands, metaphorically speaking. They say, Ya Ahl al-Jannah, Hal raditum? Are you pleased? Allah is telling the people of Jannah, Are you pleased? Ajeeb, imagine you are among the people, and you are already in Jannah. What else do you want? But Allah is telling you, while you're already in Jannah, are you pleased? Are you satisfied? They say, Ya Allah, why shouldn't we? Wa lana la narda? Why shouldn't we pleased? And you've given us things that you haven't given anyone of your creation. He says, do you want me to give you more? More? We're already in Jannah. We're this, what do you, huh? What is more than that, Ya Allah? Qala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, then I will give you my pleasure, Ridwan, so much that I do not be, I do not, uh, I will give you my pleasure, فَلَا أَسْخَطُ عَلَيْهِ بَعْدَكُمْ أَبَدًا I will never be un- displeased with you after this anymore. You have my ridwan and my pleasure from now on, and no ever, you will never, I will never be uh, displeased with you. This is even bigger than Jannah. Allah tells the people of Jannah this. We need to gauge our orientation 
to the ridwan of Allah, the pleasure of Allah in what we do and what we have in our hearts. What do you have in your heart? Do you seek the pleasure of Allah or everything else? Empty, attach and detach or detach first from all these things and attach yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fill, defill your heart from everything else and fill your heart for the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us all among the people of Jannah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Barak ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي يا مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فجعل دائرة السوء عليه اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا آتي أنفسها تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اشف اللهم مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وفك أسرانا وارحم موتانا في اللهم لنا ولآبائنا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا ولمن على الخير أعاننا وعن الشر أبعدنا ولمن أوصانا بالدعاء وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله